What's up, world, and welcome back to The Real News Network. I'm Jared Ball here in Baltimore. For some of us, the year 1925 represents the origins of a kind of pan-African holy trinity. In Martinique that year, we got the birth of Frantz Fanon. In the United States, we were given Malcolm X. And on the continent of Africa, the motherland herself, and in the Congo specifically, we all got Patrice Lumumba. July 2nd would have been his 90th birthday had he not been assassinated on January 17, 1961. To commemorate his birthday and to discuss some of the continuing ramifications of Lumumba's assassination is Kambale Musavuli. Musavuli is a native of the Democratic Republic of Congo and one of the leading political and cultural Congolese voices. He is also a human rights advocate and student coordinator and national spokesperson for the Friends of the Congo. Welcome, Kambale Musavuli, back to The Real News Network. Thank you, Jared. So let's just start, if we could, with, with a quick summary of who Patrice Lumumba was, what he represented, and ultimately why he was killed. Patrice Lumumba was, is, um, hate to say was, because I still believe his spirit still lives on. Right. Um, he, he was born in uh, 1925 as a young Congolese from the Tikkunna tribe. He grew up in a region where he saw uh, the violence of uh, the Belgians against the Congolese. Uh, Congo was colonized by the Belgians uh, since uh, the late 1800s. And he, as he grew up in the system and had access to some form of education up to the seventh grade, uh, he starts questioning some, some of the inequalities that existed. He was fortunate to be among the young leaders of the Congo who were invited at the Pan-African Congress that Kwame Krumah held in Accra in uh, 1958. As he attended that uh, Congress, he realized the importance of the Congo for the liberation of Africa. And Kwame Krumah made sure that he understood that. Uh, why Congo is important for the liberation of Africa? Uh, mainly because of its geostrategic position in the heart of the continent and uh, the resources that he has. Went back to the Congo, he mobilized thousands of people uh, to demand independence. And his fight with his comrade was uh, successful in 1960. Specifically, on June 30th, 1960, Congo gained its independence uh, from uh, Belgium. Uh, and that's really uh, what he represented for the young Congolese, that through the struggle that we've had, we've always had Congolese leaders uh, from Kimpavinta, the young Congolese uh, woman fighter for the Portuguese, to him. Uh, fighting to gain independence and mobilizing a whole nation to be free. And it was on that day, that, that, that famous day in 1960, where he gives his speech in front of the, the, the Belgian leadership, uh, depicted in, 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 of course, historical documents and even cinematically, where he, in, in, to some, uh, sealed his fate by announcing uh, his intent to break the colonial ties from the West. Could you talk a little bit about that and then, of course, what that meant for the country and ultimately the continent and really the rest of us? Yes, and it's quite interesting, the speech that he made there in 1960, on June 30th, 1960. This is a speech, actually, that he made available to the Belgian administration 24 hours before. So they knew the content of his speech. He made a few small edits. Uh, why I know? Because now, after 55 years uh, since his death, this document has been made available to Congolese people as of last month. Can you imagine that? So we see that they actually had the content. But here's the context. You have a Belgian king who's 29 years old, who comes to the Congo with a patronizing speech where he's talking about how um, they have given us independence, um, that we should be thankful for the Belgian king, Leopold II, who is responsible for millions of deaths in the Congo, we should be thankful that he brought this genius, brought civilization to the Congo. Now, this 29-year-old kid was talking to a whole nation of Africans, of Congolese, belittling them. So then at the same time, they asked for the prime minister, Patrice Lumumba, who was democratically elected by the Congolese people, not to speak on that day. It's, that didn't sit well uh, with him that this was an important day that commemorates the 80 plus years of fight that the Congolese had to wage against the Belgians, that today we will not remember that. So as you read this speech or hear his speech, the first sentence of his speech is to commemorate those who came before him 
all the fighters for independence today victorious i salute you that's the first sentence where he pays respect to our ancestors for the fight remind the congolese of the struggle that took us today and then saying that the future of congo is going to be bright but we have to fight and continue uh, to work in making Congo a better place for the betterment of Africa. That's the context. So whenever they say that that seal is fate, I, I say he helped future generation to know the history of colonialism. If he never spoke that day, we will know that there were victorious fighters before Lumumba who made so many actions to, for us to be free. So I see him as a hero, not just for the Congolese, but for the world and the importance of speaking out when you see something wrong. You also speak to uh, a threat he represented that uh, uh, garnered, in part, a response even from the then president of the United States, Dwight D. Eisenhower, uh, also recently revealed in terms of actual documentation showing that he called for Lumumba to be, quote, eliminated. Uh, exactly. So, so if we could use that as a sort of segue to a, a final statement from you uh, in the few minutes we have left to talk about why they would want him eliminated and what that has meant for the Congo today and why that, that history and why it's important that we commemorate and remember this particular history and the assassination, and specifically, of Patrice Lumumba. I mean, the overthrow and assassination of Lumumba, the essential reasons of it still remains the same, is that global forces, specifically the United States and its counterpart in Europe, want to control Congo's affairs and want to control the country. Mao would say whoever controls the Congo controls the world. You can have a young African, 34-year-old prime minister of the Congo, saying no to the U.S. to not access cobalt that they needed to use for the fight during uh, the so-called Cold War. So the control of the land, the control of the resources, is the essential reason of why he was eliminated. But his uh, ideas are still here. You know, I'm, I wasn't born in 1960. I still know of his ideas. Same thing with other young Congolese, that his ideas have lived beyond him. Not just here, uh, not just in the Congo, but also here in the United States. For example, the youth for Ferguson uh, with Hands Up United, just on June 28, they commemorated Patrice Lumumba. They even had young Congolese come there. So his idea, his Pan-African uh, ideas, has spread around the world. And the fight is not over. Young Congolese today are still fighting to reclaim the independence that we, uh, we lost. Uh, we actually gained, but uh, currently, we're still suffering. We had millions of death, and still Western power trying to control uh, the resources. But in the final analysis, I believe, in my lifetime, Congolese will be able to break from, from under the yoke of Western imperialism and capitalism. Well, we certainly hope that's the case. I want to thank you, Kambali Musavuli, for jo joining us here at The Real News Network. Thank you for joining us, taking the time today. Thank you. And thank you for joining us here at The Real News Network as well. And as always, as Fred Hampton used to say, to you we say peace if you're willing to fight for it, everybody. Peace, and we'll catch you in the whirlwind.